Christmas, ladies and gentlemen, my computer, uh, because this is parallel desktop, it's Windows within a Mac system. I restarted it, and I forgot I was uploading. So that was the problem. I'm sorry. Y'all forgive me? Even if you didn't, it don't matter, because it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Everybody, here we go. I got to show you something. Okay, because you're going to love this. You're going to love this. There's no music in the background today. Why not? Because this is a short video and I just don't feel like it, okay? God! Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this right here, this is the home of somebody's cult. Okay? But we ain't supposed to be here. This is for the clerk's office, ladies and gentlemen. This is for the United States Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit. Now, this court was formed in 1982, but that's not where we're supposed to be. We're actually supposed to be on this page, not that page, this page. So as soon as my computer gives me the ability of getting to this page, then we will get there. I'll see you when you get there. See you when you get there. See you when you get there. Pay attention. The clerk is located in the executive branch of government and provides an avenue. <laughs> this is all of your county clerks, right? State agencies are in the executive branch of government. But wait a minute, aren't the courts a state agency? Hold on now. <laughs> You're going to learn of this one. The clerk is located in the executive branch of government. Shame on these clerks for being part of the executive branch of government. Now, wait, hold on now. Hold on. Three branches of county government are executive, judicial, and legislature. Legislative. Okay? Understand, the clerk of the court is a locally elected state official. These are state courts, people, who occupies an integral position within the judicial, ju, ju, who? Jew, Jews? No, they just said the clerk of the court is part of the executive branch when they said the clerk. So let me show you how they play with y'all. Lost in emotions, Casera, Casera. I, I was talking to someone the other day, and I told him, you didn't realize that when my girl sang that song, Tina Marie, and she said, Casera, Casera, she sang Casera, Casera, okay, but she said Casera, Casera purposely. Yes, that's her. The clerk's office is part of the administrative office of the court. Clerk's office, part of the administrative office of the court. Keep that in mind. Now, that's the actual search. We're going to go to one more. So y'all can get, no, no, we don't want that one down there. We don't want that one. Okay, we don't want that one. We're going to go to that one later. We're going to get that on another page. So y'all just hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, to show you that the courts are administrative, and they are administrative, this thing is just not giving me what I need. And I do have the voice recognition off because I've been using it. The clerk of the court and is an administrative arm of the court constitutionally responsible for keeping the record books and dockets of the court. Okay, so let's go back because I, I do need y'all to see something because y'all going to love this. You're going to love the double talk because that's what they do out the side of their neck and out the crack of their anus because they can't do nothing else. This is how the courts operate. Sorry, I'm on two computers again, so y'all excuse me. I got my back turned to the computer that I'm talking on because I have to minimize some windows. Okay, two computers, people. That's the, that's the thing. It ain't the first time. Y'all know me. Those of y'all who've been around, you know me that I do things like that. Not the office of the court. We don't want that one. Uh, court administration functions, court of the state, don't want that one either. There is another one. 
Oh, they even got a definition for the judiciary. Ain't that interesting? Nope, not that one. Although not a judicial officer, the office of the circuit court clerk is created and established with the court it serves. No, it isn't. Hold on now. The clerk of the court is an elected official. The courts, the courts don't elect the person. Okay. Uh, nope, not that one. That's how they're claiming it's created by Congress, and it ain't. Hold on now. Come on now. When acting as the court clerk, the county clerk, pay attention, pay attention. We're going to see that, 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 that wearing two hats. When acting as court clerk, the county clerk is performing duties for the judicial system and is an arm of that court. See that? Acting as a clerk court and a county court at the same clerk at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't wear two hats. They can't be a judicial officer and an executive officer at the exact same time. Just can't happen. It is entirely contrary to the centralized, periodical, and other organized structure of state judiciary for the court clerk to be a loose cannon sliding around the county's judicial deck. A loose cannon. Ladies and gentlemen, the clerk is an administrative office created by the administrative branch of government. Go back and look at how the clerk of the court was originated. It's the administrative branch of government that creates that office. Okay? Uh, let's see. Acts under the supervision of a judge, but also acts under the supervision of the Secretary of State. The administration of the original oath when they are elected is through the Secretary of State. That's why you go to the Secretary of State to pull their oath of office. Okay? Just as simple. This, this is just so that you guys know. Um, I'm dealing with a court right now and they want to challenge us on our right to appeal and to amend the documents. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to tell you something that nobody else will mention to you because they don't see things the way I do. You know what I see? I see skies of blue. Oh, I'm sorry. That was uh, Louis Armstrong who said that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I see. Anytime you get a document from a government agency, no matter who it is, whether it's an application, whether it's a submission to somebody's jurisdiction, whether it's a motion, once you get that document from them and you add your information, you just amended that document. Courts accept amended documents all the time. So if you take their document and you do like we have done, you put it in PDF exchange, PDF exchange, PDF exchange, and you amend the document, you can even put on there, like I do, amended document. Ain't nothing they can say. Nothing they can say. Why? Because once you put something on that document, once you add a signature, a name, a letter, a anything, you just amended that document. So use their so-called court-approved forms, but put your approved information in there. Remember, their forms often have you agreeing to do things, agreeing that such things are facts, agreeing that the information contained in, in here or herein is accurate, true, and all of that other stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, you didn't write that junk. That's a pre-approved written form. How are you going to be agreeing to that junk? You didn't put that junk together. That's why we told you. The contracts that you see, the templates that you see on, hold on now, hold on, hold on. It's right there. Ain't even got to look for it. Well, it's going to have to load up because I ain't been there since I restarted the computer. So you know how the other one just loaded up? But ladies and gentlemen, the contracts that you see that I put online, that I put out there for free, 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 free. Other people are charging people for these contracts, which is stupid. They're free. Ladies and gentlemen, 
they're just templates until you add your information. Once you add your information, it becomes your agreement. Once you send it to the other party, it's yours. Nobody else can hold title to that. That's why you put your own contract number. But even if you leave the contract number the same and don't change it, don't worry about it. Because once you add the party's names, it becomes your agreement. It's that simple. I mean, literally, it is that simple. But again, here at SAA Limited, all of the contracts, this is the contract template page. All of the contracts up there are templates. So you put your information. Okay. Just that simple. Now, I was just looking at a case earlier today where somebody got a contract from an insurance company. An insurance company said they didn't cover this, they didn't cover that, and they put this limit on this and limit on that. Well, when the person said they didn't agree to certain things, the court said that that's an act of disaffirmance, and they have to respect that act of disaffirmance. They have to respect that act of disaffirmance. Just went over that today. So, now that you guys understand, I don't know what's wrong with this. I'm going to have to reduce the size so y'all can see it regular because even though I got, I do have it because I do the videos and I want everybody to see the screen, I do have it that way. What are you coming over here for? You got to go outside? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Penny is telling me she's got to go outside, so I got to see y'all later, okay? Let me go take care of her. Goodbye.